Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Caleb with another tutorial. Now this one is kind of a repeat from way back in the day, about nine years ago. Now, I used to focus a ton on how to bring Ableton to the stage. The reason was, at the time I had really tried to devise a system to where I could bring all of the sounds that I was creating in the studio as a producer onto the stage with me, with my band, as the live drummer and MC. I wanted to be able to bring some of those sounds so that the audience could really connect with the record that we were playing, right? Along with having the energy of the live group. Th that was really important to me. <clears throat> I wanted it to be like a hybrid experience, which I think is pretty normal now, but at the time it was really hard for me to figure out how to do this. Now, if you have anxiety about doing this or you, like you're wondering how the hell you're going to get through a song, what happens if you get off track, what happens if the sample does something, you know, if you are trying to figure out like to, or to, if you want to take the leap to really do this, I hope this tutorial will bring you a little bit of comfort and, and clarity on how you can really achieve it and how you can remain in control throughout the song or just let it play and let it do its thing. OK, you're going to be able to have the best of both worlds with this setup. And we're going to start out some, with something very simple. This is the click track <clears throat> and the follow action. These two things are important for the, the song. Okay, You're going to need somebody to have a click track in their ear to be able to understand um, where they're at. Now, that should probably be a drummer. But if you don't have drums, it's going to need to be somebody who's, who's keeping time. Okay, So let's get right into it and see what we're talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so welcome back to Ableton 12. And this is very, very simple. This is a two little clips here. One of them we're gonna call, I don't know, part A. Amazing. Don't click off this video yet. <laughs> All right, here's the other part, the chorus, okay? I just, just randomly threw in two little samples, okay? Great. Now, <clears throat> I wanna be able to set two things up. One is I want to be able to keep time, all right? So that click track, I don't want this click track, the main one, playing. I want to be able to control my own click track and send it to whoever's headphones need it. We'll, we'll get to all this later. Okay, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to insert another track called Click right next to this main track that has my samples in it. I'm going to double click. That creates a little track or a little clip here. And I'm just going to bring in a sound. This is a clicky organ sound. How's that? Okay, this is going to be our click track for this session. And watch what's going to happen. We're going to double click on it and come over here to this follow action. See here, there's a follow action section. So here we're going to enable follow action and we're going to tell this Ableton the, the action it should take is to go to the next track, sorry, the next scene after a certain amount of time has passed. So there's two different ways we can define this. We can turn off linked and unlinked. We can make it unlinked and we can just say like two bars. Okay. So now what's going to happen is this is going to change. This little play button is going to change to indicate that it it no it it now has been programmed to do something besides just play once through or loop it's now been programmed to play for two bars and then go down to the next scene but there's nothing there so let's go ahead and command e let's just duplicate that okay now let's watch what happens as we as we press play two three four one two three four boom moves on to the next one so why did we do that? Well, this enables us as the drummer to do something, to cue our band. So how are we going to make this work all together? How are we going to make it to where the click goes and then we drop into the song? Like, how do we make this happen? Well, all we have to do here is empty or is to drop in an empty click. Sorry, drop in an empty clip. And the empty clip is going to have the same follow action definition as the click track. So we're going to say enable follow action, not linked, just go for two bars. Now, what's going to happen? It's going to go next. So that means it's going to go empty, empty for two bars, then go and play labs too. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go look. Thank you. 
Okay. Interesting. So now I have the click track. What can I do with this? I can listen to this myself as the drummer. The first four are just in my ear as a reference. The second four are going to be for me to cue the band. So it would be like something like this. You understand what I'm saying? That first four is just for me. The second four is for me to cue the band. Let's play it again. One, two, ready, go, bam. Now we're all on track. We've all started at the same place. So the power of that is really, is really immense. Think about that. Instead of just looking at each other and <clears throat> like playing the sample and hoping everyone heard it and knows exactly where they are, you know, if your sample is if your sample is like abstract or it's hard to really define the timing of it and stuff, like this is critical. This click track is the way, right? One, two, three, four, me, you, everybody, go, bam. We all start together. All right, you get the point. Okay. Well, now, I what do I have to do? Do I have to launch all these tracks? No. I can tell Ableton how long I want this to play. So what if this is... Let's rename this. What if this is like the intro? Okay. How long is our intro? Our intros, I don't know. Let's open a follow action. Let's say our, let's just do it. Look, we can just keep it linked and say, let's do it four times. And then what? We're going to go down to the next one. Okay. Let's try it. Five, six, seven. Blah. It's on the first time. to do was press play and all this has been happening automatically now i could keep duplicating this if i want just if i want to make sure every one of these like if the reason that, okay the reason this would be valuable to do this is if i overwrite and i play a section i want to make sure that clicks there every time now if i don't touch it if i if i do not touch it it's going to do its thing and keep playing but if i if I don't touch it at all, that's fine. If I do overwrite or override and I just like replay a section, I need to make sure the click's still there. Cause man, when the whole band's with you and you're on stage, that click is your anchor to reality and you need to make sure you have it. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now I could program this next one to do something. I could say, okay, play uh, four times. I'm going to enable it, follow action, follow action, play four times, and then maybe stop. How about that? So hopefully you can see here like how valuable this could be, how you could orchestrate your session, your live set to step through every one of your scenes, however long you need it to happen, and then do a thing. Either go back up, go down, stop, however you need it to go. And so that when you press play at the top, it's just going to step through all of those things and then do whatever you programmed it to do. But if you need to override, if you need to repeat a section, if you need to go back to the top, you can do that. Now, the last thing I'm going to touch on right here is your launch tempo and your launch, um, your triggers. Uh, I don't know what the term is. This right here. Um, your quantization, but it's also your launch quantization. So normally I think it defaults to one bar. Okay. What that means is when you hit the launch button over here, it's going to wait for the end of the bar and then play the next thing or play the same thing. What I like to do honestly is set this to none. What that enables is the ability to just have it immediately happening when you press the button. The reason that's important is in worst case scenario, when or if the band gets off, something gets off, um, and you need to course correct, okay? If you're the drummer, you can literally hit like a crash cymbal and, and cue the band to go get back on track. So you're like, one, two, here we go, bam, all right? With your crash, you can 
relaunch the sample, re-enable that click, that timing, the, the sequence, okay? It's powerful because if you let it go to the next bar, if everyone's off, it's not gonna matter and things are gonna just get even more off track. This is your way to course correct manually. Here we freaking go, bam, okay? You can, in, you can enforce that sort of like, that restart. I hope that makes sense, okay? So setting this to none basically makes these buttons live here, like they happen in real time. But once they're launched, they keep their timing, they keep their follow action, they do everything they're supposed to do. It just allows you to trigger it immediately. So hey, I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna make some more of these. These are refreshers, okay? We're gonna talk about the sends, okay, for the click track, how to send them out to your band. We're gonna talk about, um, also launch tempo in another one but for now this is your click track and your follow action enabled in ableton all right guys hope you enjoyed it i hope you're out there making amazing content i cannot wait to hear it and i cannot wait to see it i'll see you on the next one peace and blessings